it is called the toughest foot race on earth. And it's one of the most hostile environments on the planet. This is the Marathon de Sable. Takes place over six days. It covers over 150 miles in the Sahara Desert. Now, I don't know about you. Nothing I have just said there sounds remotely attractive to me to run. It does, though, for postman Ian McLaughlin and paramedic Chris Hewitt. They both live in Cheddar and they will be taking part in this race at the start of October. Good morning to you both. Morning, Claire. Morning, Claire. Okay, Chris, let's start off with Are you insane? Um, well, what, what, what I am is, imper- is, is imperial and I work in miles. And that's the first time I've actually heard the distance of the race <laughs> described in miles because the organisers <laughs> of the Marathon des Sables are French. And so they describe it as 250 kilometres. And I have no idea how far 250 kilometres is. Maybe and you've just said it's 150 miles and suddenly that's, that's really hit home. Um, so that's a bit of an eye opener for me. Uh, Ian, I've seen documentaries about this. I have seen grown adults, the fittest athletes on the planet, reduced to their knees and in tears. What attracts you to this? Claire, it's quite difficult to say. It's It's been on my bucket list for the longest time. And um, I think my wife has been wondering what on earth I've been thinking about <laughs> considering running it as well. Um, but it's a challenge. Um, it's there. And I just think it has to be done. It has to be done. Uh, do you know anybody Ian, that has done this? No. Uh, Chris and I have been lucky enough to meet one or two people um, in our preparation who've done it, from which we've been managed to um, glean the odd uh, gems of wisdom and uh, words of warning. So, um, yes, we do. I mean, I'd like to think, Ian, you're a postie, so you, you clock up the miles anyway, don't you? And Chris, am I right in saying you're a specialist paramedic for extreme environments? Well, yes, but I, I think it's Ian who's got the advantage because, you know, he's used to covering really long distances on foot, carrying a lot of weight, whereas a lot of what uh, what I do as a paramedic in kind of a rescue situation is kind of short, sharp kind of periods of activity. And and in fact, I took up running to try and get fitter, whereas, whereas Ian gets fit through his job. So he's really got, he's the one to watch. I think he's got a got a bit of an advantage <laughs> over me. How how have you been training for this? How do you, when you're in England, how do you train for something like this, Ian? Claire, I'm very lucky that um, I cover in and around 100 kilometres a week on foot and just delivering my round. But the other good fortune is that I'm one of these idiots that likes getting out to run and cycle and swim, and I always have been. So getting out and covering an extra 30 to 40 miles a week might not sound like a lot. Um, It's all I can fit into my life schedule at the minute, but that seems to be um, good enough to do the trick, I hope. But uh, to try and emulate just even the the heat, that's got to play the biggest part in this, isn't it? Claire, yes. Um, That's going to be the challenge for both of us, uh, amongst others. And um, there's a couple of ways in which we can prepare for that. And one is when I do go out running and the weather's not quite what it should be, at least not Saharan, is I make sure I I layer up just to uh, make myself warmer than I'd like to be. Um, The other way would be to spend time in a sauna. And um, you could have hot baths after you run, which is called hot water immersion therapy. And apparently that will help prepare the body physiologically <laughs> for, the, for the rigors of the Sahara. But um, I think time will tell. Yeah. Well, we're just getting some information. The Sahara Desert, one of the driest and hottest regions of the world. It's got a mean temperature of over 30 degrees Celsius. That's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The average high... 40 degrees Celsius, that's 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Chris, this obviously isn't putting you off. Well, well, maybe I'm having a little bit of second thoughts. Would, <laughs> would maybe you like to take my place? No way. Um, but I think actually we've been, we've been quite lucky in that we've, um, we've been able to train through the summer and we had quite a heat wave a couple of weeks ago. So Ian and I were out in the um, in noonday sun, getting as much of that Somerset sun as we possibly could, kind of, kind of going backwards and forwards across the Mendips. So we were quite lucky because normally um, the Marathon de Sables is held in the spring. 
Um, right. And so we'd have had to have trained through the winter, in the dark, in the rain, maybe a little bit of snow, which is definitely not ideal um, training for the desert. Um, but because it's been postponed by six months, um, we're able to train in the summer. The disadvantage is it will be a couple of degrees hotter in October uh, in Morocco than it normally is. Um, but at least we'll be a little bit better acclimatized. The other thing, though, you, you know, you've, you've mentioned the statistics of how we're going to have to expect 40 degree um, temperatures. At night, it can drop to near freezing. Oh, my word. So we've really got kind of um, both ends of the extreme. And one of the things we have to do is carry all of our equipment and food for the entire week on our backs. And so we have to make a lot of decisions about comfort versus uh, making our running easy. You know, we could take a massive inflatable air bed and a 15 tog duvet with us. Ridiculous. And, and have a lovely, really warm, comfortable <laughs> night. <laughs> but then we'd have to carry it for 30 miles through the desert the next day. Yeah, I'd just so take an empty duvet sheet. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so do you, I mean, obviously then you're, you're sleeping in what, tents or just out in the open? A tent is a, is a generous description of a tarpaulin Very. held up by a stick. <laughs> a couple, yeah, yes, that's about it. <laughs> what is, what are you looking forward to, Ian, with this? I'm looking forward to the challenge. I'm looking forward to um, giving my body a little bit of test. Um, I'm looking forward to the open air, the outdoor spaces, um, the sunrises, the sunsets, um, without wanting to sound too romantic. Um, <laughs> looking, for, <laughs> looking forward to just be, being out there and, and experiencing something different. Um, uh, another thing, of course, um, is uh, it's given me and Chris an opportunity to to raise funds for a charity which is dear to both of our hearts, which is called Hounds for Heroes, which train assistance dogs for former serving members of the uh, the military, the armed forces, but also the civilian emergency services. Um, having served in the Royal Air Force uh, and Chris being paramedic, um, both of our respective colleagues who, who would be in need um, would benefit from this charity. So. Um, uh, looking forward to being able to raise some good funds, which will help support the wonderful work that they do. I was going to get on to that. You've got your website, postisjourney.co.uk. That's P-O-S-T-I-E-S, postisjourney.co.uk, uh, where you can read up more, see pictures of both of you, and, of course, uh, make a donation. I love the fact as well, it, it sets it down in stages. Stage one, 32K, then you do 40K, <laughs> then 32K. Stage four, they ramp it up to 86 kilometres. Stage five is 42.2. And then stage six, you just got a breezy eight kilometres. <laughs> a, a gentle stroll. Yeah, a gentle stroll. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, it's nice to finish it off with a fun run, isn't it? I, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I, this, is, this, is, this will be, is it fair to say, Chris, the biggest challenge of, of you, your body, your mental ability as well that you've ever had? I think that's the key thing, Claire, is this isn't so much a physical challenge, though clearly there is, um, you know, a, le a level of fitness that's required. But I think it's the, the, the mental, um, the mental pressure that, that we have to, to, to push ourselves through. Um, you know, once, once we're there, there's going to be no giving up for us and mm. we're going to get each other through the 250 kilometers of burning sun, um, you know, there, there, there's nothing that together we're not going to be able to handle. Um, I, I'm just not quite sure how we're going to do it yet. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> if, if we can, it would be great to catch up with the both of you. When do you do it? It's, it's beginning of October, is that right? Yes, Claire. We, yeah, we fly out on Friday the 1st and um, we land in a place called Irashidia um, to the south east um, in the Moroccan desert, and um, they bus us straight out into the Sahara. Um, we have a prep day on the Saturday, um, weighing and sorting and doing all the, the admin bits and pieces. And then on Sunday morning at about nine o'clock, um, they point us in the direction of the sand and um, to the tunes of uh, Highway to Hell, <laughs> apparently. 
they send the, the, they send us off in the distance and off we go. So it's, it's, it's Sunday the third. Amazing. The organisers have a wonderful sense of humour. Best of luck with this, chaps. I love the fact you're doing this for Hounds for Hero. I wish you all the Thank best. You, I will leave you because I love a statistic. Uh, this is the equivalent of running from Cheddar to Derby. <laughs> so there you go. On, on a warm day. On a warm day on sand. <laughs> so all the best. <laughs> Keep in touch and we will catch up with you both uh, after I'm sure you have completed this. Uh, all for Hounds for Heroes. That's postman Ian McLaughlin there and paramedic Chris Hewitt, uh, both from Cheddar, uh, who at the beginning of October will be completing the Marathon de Saab. This is the toughest foot race on earth. Whew, I think I'll just go and get a chocolate bar.